Hi guys, this is James from DBG and today I thought I'd do something different. Um, I'm going to step away from 40k for a bit and I'm going to talk about um, how to choose a bolt action army. Now there are three ways to do this, in my opinion, oh, probably more, but three ways to do this. First of all, you pick what you like. So unfortunately with bolt action you do have to choose a faction. So you choose the faction you like, whether it's the Germans, British, Americans, Japanese, Soviets, whatever. There are so many factions in bulk action. It's not just the main ones, not, the, not just the main five. There are more. So you choose the one you want. Then you pick the stuff you like the look of and build your force around that. That's the rule of core. The German players go, oh, tigers. Everyone loves the tigers. Um, they're very points heavy in this game, as you would expect. Uh, with the British, they'll go, oh, um, paratroopers or commandos because they're quintessentially um, something British. Um, the second way is the way that I choose to do it which is going on actual historical units which is why you have the selection of books I have here which I'll go through in a minute. So you choose um, again a faction. I then choose a um, theatre of operations uh, whether it be uh, Eastern Front Northwest Europe, North Africa, um, the Pacific, or India, China, Burma. Choose one of those. Then I choose a particular time period in that um, in that theatre. So, for instance, I could do uh, the Battle of El Alamein, the Second Battle of El Alamein. So I'd have Desert Rats, I'd have Sherman tanks, I'd have six pounders, I'd have twenty-five pounders. And I can have various different types of units in there because it was a multicultural force. I could have free French, I could have Greeks, I have Australians, I could have New Zealanders, I could have the British, I could have the Scottish. And there's so many different things to choose from. And then you need to look at the manufacturers when you're doing it that way. The third way of doing it is the tournament way, the gamey way. And that is going through your army book from the chosen faction and choosing the best units that you know you can get the best out of on the battlefield, regardless of how the game goes, because obviously bolt action is not you go, I go, you go, I go. It's random activ activization with the dice bag. So you choose the best units you know that are either survivable enough, or have high enough morale, or can chuck out so much firepower that they can take not going first, because that is the way bolt action works. So, <coughs> What I'm going to do is go through the way I would do it if I'm choosing an army. And I've just got a selection of stuff here that can help you. Um, I'm a massive, massive, massive history geek. So um, I've got a big collection of books. I'm always watching documentaries on YouTube about the war. Or theatres. I tend to steer away from um, D-Day because I believe that's been overdone thanks to... Uh, Saving Private Ryan and Band of Brothers and that sort of thing. I believe, um, well, certain aspects of the D-Day landings have been overplayed and people tend to not then focus on the breakout, what happened after D-Day, um, which, you know, you had the largest advance of any army was the British Army advancing 300 miles in a matter of days, going from northern France right the way through to, to the other end of Belgium onto the edge of Holland, in a matter of days, which is hardly ever, ever talked about. Anyway, so what I do, I have a, I do heartily recommend these Osprey books and their own other Osprey books. So say for instance, I was going to do Eastern Front, and this particular one, uh, 1941. You'd get the Soviet book or the German book, and at the back of these books, uh, this, this one, you've got theatre selectors which gives you well so here's an eastern front theatre selector operation citadel which we know um, will be known as battle of kursk there's much more to it than that but you know most people have heard of the battle of kursk and this gives you the stuff that you can use because of the stuff that was there and sometimes it gives you more, like for instance here, you've got two machine gun teams, so they use one. 
but everything else is normally one so it gives you the list of vehicles and whatever you can use so if you're doing a tank horse course you can use this to represent the vehicles that were there and this is the same in the back of all the bolt action books even in um, the main rule book uh, once you get past the stuff there's um lots of stuff if you're a basic timeline which may pique your interest into um, a specific theater or a specific battle so you can choose an army or what to do another way of doing it is these fantastic ones here the um uh, campaign books obviously this one is dj into germany and this one is african campaign and italian campaign and they also expand these like there's a one for berlin there's an Ostfront one there's uh, pacific yeah there's loads of them and they're all bloody amazing so much information in them they go into so much depth and they do additional units additional ways of building your armies obviously if you're playing in a tournament you need to make sure that the selectors in here are viable <coughs> And one book that I have found indispensable is this book here. This was bought for me by my mother when I was 15 years old. So 28 years ago, this book was, and it served me well. It has a wealth of information and presented in a clear and concise manner. If you don't want to read the whole text, you've got these little bullet points that tell you, um, important things what happened and there's lots of stuff and they've got lots of propaganda pictures like I have down there but some of the best stuff is these plates like this there's one for this for pretty much every major battle it's like Kursk El Alamein um, there's even one for um, Kohima and Infal a famous battle in the um, Governor Pal uh, Governor General's residence there was a battle across um, a tennis court the British and Commonwealth troops on one side of the tennis court, the Japanese were on the other. And there's a play of that in this, and it gives you lots of little points which are listed down here. And you can find out um, at a glance what happened without going into massive amounts of detail. And then if you want to go into massive amounts of detail, there's other books, there's other text. So this I found immeasurably useful. And yeah, it's split into so many, yeah, split into I think five sections. And yeah, if you can get a hold of this book, you might find it in the works or something. It is a very, very good book. And right at the very end, you have you have a timeline which covers most things, and it even goes into goes past the Second World War, goes right the way up until 1955, the creation of the Warsaw Pact. And at the back. So there's another one of those plates. This is um, Iwo Jima, Mount Suribachi, all the uh, beaches and having there. So if you're like me and you love the history behind the game, then I recommend getting your hands on a really good book and reading the bits that... Don't read the whole thing because you might get bored. Because the second one... See, this is the bit I was looking for. That is the list of casualties. Um, I think it may have been updated now because this book is quite old, um, especially when you, with regard to the Chinese, Soviet and German casualties. But yeah, it's all very good stuff. And I can't recommend more getting hands on a really good book, reading it through, finding a theatre you like, an action you like, or say you've got a favourite tank. For me, my favourite British tank is Matilda. I can then go back into the uh, desert and build an army around uh, some of the stuff in the desert. Or, because the Matilda was practically everywhere, I can go to northern France in 1940. I can go to Russia throughout the war from 91 to 45 because the Matilda was there. I can go to uh, the Pacific because Matildas were in, in Borneo and New Guinea fighting against the Japanese. There's so much choice. That is, uh, and same with um, any tank or any um, unit, say you really like power triggers. You 
can do D-Day. If you're German, you can do Crete. If you're British, you can do so many other things. So, as a sort of summary, if you're like me, and you like to put some meat on the bones of your army, so to speak, get a book, watch some documentaries, get some information, get some... If you've got an interest in it, you want to do it, which is why the armies that I did are the armies that I did, the ones I did um, army talks on. They're all done for specific actions. And yeah, well, that's it. That's that. If you're still with me, thank you very much, because I have rambled a bit. But uh, yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Do all the YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, and all that jazz. Don't forget to look at the link in the description for Goblin Games. And get yourself a good um, reference material for doing World War II gaming. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.